What is up, everyone? Welcome to round five of the semifinals of the July Portland Monthly Premon Paper Magic Afternoons 2024 tournament. We got a couple of really cool decks, so let's dive into the list. First up, we have John V on a classic of pretty much every format, Blue White Control, aka Landstill. This is unique in pre-modern in the fact that it uses Standstill, the enchantment for two, where whenever a player casts a spell, their opponent draws three cards. So this deck is all about controlling the board through counter spells, removal, and eventually winning the game through man lands and large Decree of Justices. Notably, the Decree of Justice cycling does not count as a spell or standstill. If you look at this deck list real quick, I want to call out the fact that the Impulses, which are a four of, and the Factor Fictions, which are a three of, are in that kind of glare spot there in the middle, so if you're wondering what those are, there you go. Anyways, that's the list John's running, so let's see who he's playing against. Next up is another staple of format in Green White Terrageddon. Ryan is running his own brew that he's been working on for quite a bit. It does have some unique bits in that it has Riftstone, Portal, and Core Haven in the lands, has a Frexian Furnace in the main, and a Sylvan Safekeeper for when the need arises to sack your own permanents. There also are two Exalted Angels in the main, which are pretty spicy, and four Weathered Wayfarers to make sure you're getting the maximum out of your ramp. Overall, having played against this list, it is deceptively strong. I mean, Terror is obviously a very good card, but this list can just run away with the game. So without further ado, let's get into the games. And here we go. John is on the left, Ryan is on the right. These are the semifinals of the July tournament. Funny enough, both players rocking some white sleeves. White obviously being a very prominent color in both decks. Arguably maybe the best control color <laughs> in pre-modern. I don't know if uh, blue trumps that or not, but definitely one of I would say probably the top three colors easily in pre-modern. I'd love to say black is up there too. <laughs> and it's got some fun toys, but you know. All right, looks like John is gonna be shipping it back. I think Ryan is keeping a seven. <laughs> For those of you that may have glanced at the run time there, it's definitely gonna be a landstill match. <laughs> Blue white control doing what it does best. And of course, in top eight, <laughs> these are untimed rounds. Oh, I guess we're gonna get a peek at the hands. Ryan getting pretty solid hand there. Some early interaction. The sword's not going to do too much. All right, gemstone mine into other wayfarer. Say go. Fairy conclave and pass. One of those man lands coming down early, and that's going to get wastelanded right away. <laughs> or is it? Ryan deciding if he actually wants the mana here. I don't think there's a way for him to utilize it in the targeting. If he, if he only had that land, maybe. <laughs> Weather Wayfair does enable some fun tricks with fetch lands and that sort of thing, responding to the sack trigger, which Ryan might be doing next turn. Oh, we got a Nimble Mongoose. Swinging in for one, getting aggressive with the Weather Wayfair. Looks like John has no shortage of lands in hand, though. Just gonna pay a, a planes and pass. Okay, now what if the sac okay, yes, then I can actually do it. I can sacrifice it yeah, by activating white, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Man, it's been a while since I played pre mod I'm definitely feeling the, the rust. Sure. You know, I, yeah, I don't remember the last time I played. So. Both players getting a little more settled in. <laughs> Maybe subconsciously knowing that it's going to be a long game. Yeah, I think just 19, yeah. 
that. No, 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 I did attack you for two. Because uh, I didn't activate. That was the whole point. Some discussion happening here, maybe talking over with one of the TOs who also act as a judge. For some reason I was like, this guy was in play, but yeah. Alright. Yeah, sorry. No, no, no worries. There will be more. Um, I promise. And now you're doing the tutor for the I believe we're floating a white here. Yep. Can I activate the Weather Wayfarer? Go find whatever land could want. I imagine it'll be a green source. Although, Ryan does have a fetch land. Do we grab a shot in port? There you go. That makes sense. Same time building up that threshold for the Nimble Mongoose. Two cards in the graveyard now. And do we see the fetch? I imagine so. I need to start getting some more colored sources out. Oh, alright. Rashad and Port. Into a furnace. Hit your card in the graveyard and pass. Now, obviously. Well, I guess. The blue-white deck could care about the graveyard. I don't remember seeing any accumulated knowledges. I don't think they run those. That could be an instance of where the graveyard matters for that deck. Granted, Ryan may not know what he's up against at this point. I've only seen land cards. And we're just going to get in the red zone. Swing it on in. Alright, choosing not to fetch here. But we are going to impulse. Is there anything good off the top? Looks like the swords. Another mana leak. Looks like he has at least one in hand. Might be wanting just lands. I did see at least one land in there, right? No, opting for the swords. Alright. Now Ryan fetching. Gonna port the blue source. Maybe getting a little more hint, seeing a planes and an impulse, he might be up against some sort of control deck. Minimizing blue is not a bad idea. He's going to go ahead and grab another planes. He does have a Terravor in hand. Currently no way to make green mana. John is giving that Weather Wayfarer read again. No shame in rereading cards, no matter how many times you've seen them. Pros do it all the time. Just want to make 100% sure you know what that card does. Nothing wrong with that. And he's going to Swords. The way fair. And... Just straight pass it back to Ryan. Play out of Wasteland, not having a good target here. And just getting for one. Port the planes, makes sense. Whatever color John has least, makes sense to get in on. That is a good Wasteland target. Almost too good. What else could he have in hand that Ryan would potentially not want to wasteland here? Right, gonna hit your swords. And interestingly, not wastelanding the factory. Alright, another fetch land coming up. Swing it on in. I'm gonna go ahead now and wasteland the factory.
And I guess John not floating the mana before that happens. Not that there's much you could do with just one blue necessarily, but just gonna impulse. Gets another land source, makes sense. Blue eye control definitely wants to have his mana open. Specifically for Decree, which he did just draw. More little soldiers you can put down, the better. Very rarely are you ever actually casting that for the 4-4 four, four angels, usually only when you're really ahead. I think I've only done it like once or twice <laughs> with black-white control. Usually you're just end step making a army in a can. Interesting now, Ryan is at threshold. That mongoose is bigger. It's going to start turning into an actually game ending threat. Speaking of game ending threats, <laughs> the Terravore, which is probably going to get mana leaked. Don's got that one cocked and ready to go. Yep. No green meanie for you. Still going to swing in for a bunch, and hopefully the life totals here will get updated on the dice too. I think both players opting for pen and paper life totals. But we do wish they would use the dice as well for our viewing pleasure. That's a humility. That is a great way to deal with the Nibble Mongoose. Get rid of that shroud. I'd have to think that's probably the choice here. I believe that's what he took. There is a land still down there too. But you don't want to be casting that yet. Land still is really only when it's early enough in the game. Or you've got enough of a lock on the game. Ryan seeing that the, uh, the dice need to be updated, at least on his side. Hopefully he'll point that out for John. Uh, Alright, we're just gonna cycle here. Land for turn, and swing it on in. Oh, all right, John sees it. We're down to seven. I thought we were getting pretty low. <laughs> Can only be swinging in with uh, a threshold nimble mongoose for so long before it actually starts making a real dent. And I think John's only real out is a humility or a wrath of god, which he does have, I think, four of in the deck. And now I'm wondering if he actually did take the humility. I believe he did. Maybe not. Alright, Ryan just gonna pass. A lot of mana up. Gonna hit a white source. Make it at least a little painful if you have to wrath. As a land still. Still. You might actually have two at this point. And it doesn't look like he did pick the humility. Yeah, I think his only white card in hand is the decree. Which, granted, he can make some blockers and stall for time. That is a valid option. Taking some more damage. There's another Nimble Mongoose. 
That one will get counterspelled. And pass to you. Porting down the planes. There's the Wrath of God. It'll cost him some damage. He is down at three. Now we try and slam some threats if we got them. Cycling a land. Is that another mongoose? Oh, that's a Sylvan library. And pass. No creature threats in hand. Now, John does have that seal of cleansing there. <laughs> so. He can just crack it. I imagine he's not going to give Ryan an A. Yeah, that makes sense. And then the land still doesn't come down? Yes. All right. Now, here's the thing, though. Ryan should have a decent amount of man lands. He just hasn't seen any of them. And it's just going to pass. Ooh, that's a Dust Bowl. Suddenly those man lands are not going to do a much. Land for turn. Are we going to Dust Bowl here? Here, so take out the Rashad and port. Do you port something on its way out? <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but. John seeing another swords. Those swords are obviously not very good against the Nimble Mongoose, but as long as you can draw Wrath of God when you need it, that's all that matters. And Ryan is going to pass. Is that another Nimble Mongoose? Or is that a library? Either way, do you want to be the one that breaks the land still? Looks like it. That's a Mongoose. And I think he's just hoping John does not draw into a straight counterspell. Which does he have it? He has a mana leak. No. That will resolve. But we're going to get two blockers with that decree of justice. <laughs> Both of which will get swords. Alright, so John goes up to five. Does not have a blocker. Did he just draw another decree? I think he did. Yeah. Decree cycle into decree, making it look easy. Might now be thinking about actually casting some angels, which I did say doesn't really happen. But your opponent just did just burn. Two swords. All right, we got a four-four. This is a good blocker. All right, there's a restorm portal. Usually you don't want that to be on the battlefield. Really only does something. <laughs> what is in the graveyard? There you go. Armageddon. Okay, that makes sense. Now, unfortunately, John has a lot of cards in hand. And I believe has some lands as well. Ryan did draw a land. Can at least get that source to Plowshares mana. Potentially. 
Oh, actually, no. John only has the one. <laughs> and Ryan is ripping lands. Alright, this is truly becoming a top deck war. Oh, can't tap that Weather Wayfair. Or that, uh, Winswift Heath. You gotta crack it. You gotta go get something. Oh, wait, no, the Ristorm Portal. That's right. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> that does make it so your fetch lands can tap for mana. A little quirk. Alright, well, I call the herd. It's not gonna hit. But it could come back later. Alright, it looks like John did draw the humility. Does not have the lands to play it yet, but that's a lot of lands on top. Imagine he's gonna want most of those. <laughs> And go. Alright, how about Terravore? That is a big one. That's going to end the game if there's no answers to it. I think that's... I think. Oh, no, there's a sword. <laughs> but that is going to be a ton of life for Ryan. We're going to get a quick count here on lands. Either for swords mana or just for overall life gain. Let's see if we can get a dice on how big this terror war is. Is gonna get swords. Oh god. <laughs> Is that a 20 point? 25? 24. This is a casual 24 life gain. Now I'm starting to see why these games might have taken a while. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot. Oh, there's another Terravore. And there's a Counterspell. Not walking into that again. And these mana leaks actually are gonna start becoming very relevant for John. There's a man land. They were in the deck. And Ryan, I think, just needs a swords or something. Swords, I think, would be the only thing that could do it. John is saying go. Make a white and line tutor. That will resolve. Grabbing, I think the last library. Right, two have been played this game so far. Deck's looking mighty thin. And that library is a bit of a risk. You know, there's been a couple of counter spells, at least one mana leak. Do you risk playing it out? When your opponent has a full grip of cards. Uh, yeah, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 Y
You've got seven cards in hand. I've used two. Getting a little count here, maybe, on what's in the graveyard, how many mana leaks have been played. Don't do it. Oh no. <laughs> yep. There is a counter spell up, but there's no need for it. Just use one of the two mana leaks that are still in hand. A little rough. To fetch here. Go down to three. It might be the last basic in John's deck. These decks looking mighty trim. All right, still hits a land drop though. And go. Happen one. There's the swords. Unfortunately, there is just a straight counter spell, and there's still that decree of justice. Unfortunately, I think things are looking pretty slim for Ryan. He may not know it yet, but he is pretty well locked out of this game. I'm not sure if there's a good path for victory here. Yes, he can flash back the call of the herd, but I believe there's still at least one mana leak. John's hand. I'm gonna try one more time, swords. All right, we're gonna factor fiction here. There's a the wrath of God. You don't want that. There's a man land, that's pretty risky. Wasteland's not ideal either. Interesting. That is very risky. I think John still just takes the four cards. That wasteland gets rid of the man land. You have your own man land with flying that can start attacking in. And a disenchant, just in case there's some shenanigans going on. In fact, having that disenchant with humility. Oh, we're going to Swords 1. Trying to get a, a win in there real quick, but not going to work. Mishra's Factory coming down. And there's a Humility. And then do you play land still? <laughs> nope, just gonna pass. Ryan, full on top deck mode here. Yes, he does have a ridiculous amount of life. But will it matter? Again, John is building up. He's got that decree in hand. Gonna wait as long as he can to get as much value out of it as he can. He doesn't care if everything's a 1-1 one -one if all he's making is 1-1s. One -one. I'm wondering if we're just going to get a concession out of Ryan here. Alright, we're just getting a pass. Go. There's another land.
can't activate the man land. I believe, right? Layers is always something that's super confusing to me, but I believe once you activate that man land, it doesn't have flying. It's just a 1-1. One, one. I'm going to say go. Curious as to what he could be drawing. If there are lands, he'd want to play them out. He doesn't have much in the way of spells that... Cost much more than the three mana. There's another man land. Are we gonna attempt the water here? No. <laughs> no testing. Now, with the way the factories work, this might be what they're discussing. Can you buff it with the other factory? After the fact? Alright, we are turning both of these into 1-1s. One one. Right? Just gonna prevent damage. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, yeah, there we go. I'm a little curious why you moved him over there. For a second, I thought he put him in the, the discard, but. Alright, there's a wasteland. Here, one of the man lands. Swing in for one. Not really worth decreeing. Well, you really can't actually. Sorry. So there is a path here where you make a ton of four fours that are one ones. Disenchant your own humility on your turn. And start swinging in. It's definitely a weird option, but John is running out of cards in his deck. And that would be the way to win the quickest, I would think. Land for turn. And go. I'm very curious as to what's in Ryan's hand. We don't really have a good look at it. Alright, end step. We're making seven one ones. Yeah. Draw for decree. We did lose a life total there. <laughs> but. Ooh, and the standstill is getting broken. But I believe John is still just at three. All right, we're grabbing the last library. I guess we didn't play all three. There is one left. That four cards, <laughs> four cards left in John's library. Wasteland the core haven. Animate the two lands. Go to combat. Swing with everything. It's gonna block. Probably one of the soldiers, not one of the lands. Down to 24. Discard. Yeah, that's not, that's not getting cast. 
card for her turn. I thought he cast a frantic search. And <laughs> I was very concerned. Uh, but no, discarding the hand size. Alright, there's a Sylvan Library. There's a Wither Wayfarer. And go. Mana Leak for the Wither Wayfarer. The Disenchant. The Sylvan Library. Alright, things are looking very dire for Ryan now. Another man land. Figuring out how he's gonna be tapping all of this. And yes, this is what I was wondering about. Does the factory buff the other factory? I am very curious if that works. It should, because it happens after it's on the board with the humility. Ooh, we got an exalted angel. Ryan not reflecting the damage in the dice, but it is functionally eight less. To that, sixteen. Two cards <laughs> in John's deck. The exalted angel could be. Well, it's not going to matter too much. Only going to gain two life from that. Go up to eighteen. Alright, can animate everything. Swing in for everything. Take nine. John is saying, this is what I got. We're going to game number two. Alright, if you're still with us, thank you for watching. That was a hell of a game one. 36 minutes, roughly. <laughs> Well, obviously the rest are not going to be like that, but when control meets somebody with a very high life total, it definitely takes a minute, that's for sure. Those one ones can only swing in for so much. Looks like John is again shipping it back, and I think Ryan is again keeping a seven. John, of course, being on the play here. Excuse me, on the draw, <laughs> not on the play. Ryan is on the play. There were definitely moments where Ryan had spots to turn it around, at least early game, but once John was drawing cards, stabilizing, playing out Landstill, when the Landstill deck starts playing Landstill, <laughs> that's when you know you're in trouble. That's when they feel the most comfortable like, they can draw, go, hold everything back. You'll be curious to see what both players brought in. I'd have to imagine Ryan took most of his swords out. He's got enough ways to deal with lands that swords are fairly dead cards. Cataclysm is probably... Actually, I don't know if he has that in his, his side, but if he does, I have to imagine that would come in. Good way to clear the board from all those little 1-1s, one -ones and also clear a bunch of lands if you have a big threat like a Terror right, We got some lands, we got some spells. <laughs> Appreciate Ryan giving us a look. Oh, there's a Wrath of God. That's a good keep for John. There's a furnace, also very good to keep in hand. Two plays, two one drops. We got our Wayfarer and we got our Sylvan. We got our Olirade. It was so cool, by the way, this last Pro Tour for uh, MH3. <laughs> The fact that Olirade was playing still in the Pro Tour 
and people, I don't know if he was actually on the Nadu deck that was running, uh, someone said here, but people were playing his card while he was at the tournament, because that was one of the builds for Nadu. Alright. Library getting mana leaked. Makes sense. Let's just swing in for two. Exile your card while we're at it. Always great to see old pros. Still kicking it. Still doing well. We don't really have to get into uh, Kai, but just the fact that he re queued in a last chance PTQ on Sunday, because, you know, never loses on Sundays. It's very cool. I don't want to get into it because I'm going to get emotional. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck cancer, that's all I gotta say. I'll be my one F word for the video. Usually try and keep it pretty family friendly, but I feel like that's acceptable. Alright, one of the benefits of this Weathered Wayfarer, of course, is that it can go and grab any land. Doesn't have to be basic. It doesn't have to have a basic land type, it just can be whatever you want. So that issue's factory is not long for this world. Ooh, there's an Nimble Mongoose. You got the counter magic for that. In fact, do you want to counter that, actually? <laughs> uh, Ryan is playing a little aggressive here. Definitely playing into a blowout with the Wrath of God. Now, John does have to draw another white source. I don't think he's got it in hand. Breaking his does have the target. You can't... I guess you can, yeah, you can target yourself, grab the mana leak, draw a card. Really just digging for a white source, I think, is the thing. Oh, yep, that's getting wastelanded. Uh, that also works. <laughs> you know all those one drops you have? It'd be a shame if they blow up the next turn. Goblins and their explosives, man. <laughs> I would love to see a pre-modern deck that's actually able to utilize Goblin Grenade in an effective way. I did see that uh, red-black Goblins deck run around. We might have even caught it on video last... No, next month. We got footage you guys haven't even seen yet. <laughs> I don't think it runs Goblin Grenade, but it runs uh, Living End to bring back all your Goblins, as long as... Um, well, and some other cool tech. So I wonder if it's running Gotmo Grenade. Alright, we're just gonna go ahead... Yep, crack that now. Makes sense. Boom. Another man land and go. Doesn't even need the Wrath of God. Alright, what does... Ryan got going on here. He's got a Weather Wayfair. Will that resolve? More than likely, I don't think. Well, doesn't even have two blue up. Cycle a step. Take go. Alright, we did see a counter spell on John's hand. I think he did. No, did he miss his land drop again? That is unfortunate. <laughs> Thankfully for John, Ryan can't capitalize on the missed land drops, having not much in the way of threats in that weather wayfair, obviously not going to be activating anytime soon. Can't even get free chip damage in with that factory. But we're going to try. Bluff of swords. Did I keep swords in? You don't know. <laughs> There's a mom. That's pretty good. Oh. Ryan did keep the swords in. All right. Well, two for one is pretty good. Are we going to see a wrath here? Nope. Looks like John wants to wait it out a little bit. It's in pretty at 14 life. He can take. Potentially one. Are right, you going to swing in with mom? That is, 
That is the question. I feel like... No. <laughs> Grand, there is no two blue mana. There's no counter spell. Alright, yeah, we'll just get aggressive. Bluffing that swords, that's not really a bluff. Alright, we are gonna factor fiction here. Ooh. What are we doing? Two impulses. The bomb. Two degrees. That is a tough split. Whoa, somebody knocking the camera. What's going on here? <laughs> that was a pretty egregious misuse of my equipment. <laughs> Not sure who did that. <laughs> There is beer flowing at these events. It's very possible someone just stumbled into the umbrella. But I think we're fine. Video cuts out, you guys will know why. <laughs> Camera fell out. Yeah, what is going to be the divide here? It's not really a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan throwing up his hands like, I don't know. Keep it that way. Interesting. All right. Not keeping two decrees in hand. Keeping the impulses. And the board wipe. Are we playing it out? All right. Give himself a little reminder to uh, put a counter. And Ryan opting to get a little bit more mana here. A little choked on mana, actually, which is kind of surprising. In a wasteland. Hit the factory. There you go. Impulse on end step. All right, that's a lot of removals. So the funny thing is, John did just put two of his four win conditions in the graveyard. Taking up that bomb. And yeah, it makes sense. Just set it off. Decide how he's gonna tap for it. Or I guess it's just a tap to sack. And down comes a land still. I got a bunch of cards in hand. You don't got anything going on. When will you let me draw three cards? And that is the question. Now, with that fetch line, John does functionally have access to two blue. Just gonna go ahead and take the land still. Oop, dropping cards. <laughs> no shortage of good cards in hand for John. What are we going to do about... Yep, yeah, that makes sense. Go and get uh, an island. 
hard counter the mongoose <laughs> and there's a cataclysm obviously obviously Ryan would have preferred to have the nimble mongoose out when that cataclysm resolved but I believe it's resolving so all but one land gets sacked yeah, might as well keep the dual land. Makes sense. And say go. And interesting enough, the Restorm Portal is now in the graveyard again. I actually missed him play that. So all of Ryan's lands are now dual lands. I kind of actually think it'd be interesting if you did play Restorm Portal in the main, running at least one Cataclysm in the main as well, just having an extra way to get in the graveyard. Here's the thing though. John has a card advantage. Just drew a ton. Probably is going to be able to make his land drops for the next few turns. Ryan with only three cards in hand, does he have... that level of mana available to him as well. <laughs> in fact, John's saying, I've got so many lands in hand, I'm even going to pitch one. All right, there's a man land. That is a threat. Still needs green source to activate it, but can do. John impulsing on end step. Do you keep the swords? Interesting. So, I had to check this to confirm. The impulse printing that John has actually has a mistake on it. And that it's... Is it from Visions? Yeah. It has the end text, shuffle your library afterwards. That is not supposed to be there. If you look at the Oracle text, you just put the cards at the bottom of your library in any order. So... I don't know if that was a known fact or if both players just forgot, but just so you guys know, <laughs> Impulse does not let you shuffle after you get the cards as a misprint and potentially provided a pretty good advantage for John here. Yes, even back in the day, <laughs> reading the card did not always explain the card. Unfortunately. Alright, another man land coming down. Oh, we are going to get a factor fiction here. And we'll see if this pile will be a little easier to split than the last one. I have to imagine if any decrees get shown, John will want to pick them up. That is a very interesting pile. I would not want to put the two pieces of removal together, especially when you're down on lands. Nope, okay, that's the way we're going to do it. Impulses are scary in that they're a what-if. But, I mean, John does have a swords in hand already, so maybe he doesn't take it. I 
think you just take the dust bowl and the uh, swords. Yeah, he's already got another land in hand. Doesn't really need mana that badly. At least one land in hand. He might even have two. Got a mana leak. But actively keeping your opponent at low lands makes sense. And a Wrath of God. Yeah, we, that makes total sense. Those were arguably the two best cards. Even without knowing John's hand, I think putting them together was kind of scary. Alright, Dust Bowl coming down. You know about it. There it is. You draw a Wasteland or an Armageddon. So be it. But John betting. That's not a thing. At least right now. Activating the Dust Bowl. What are we sacking? Paint Land. Okay. Dark our waste to the grave. Land for turn. Fern is coming out. I'm gonna start chipping away at the lands in Ryan's graveyard. He did just draw a Nimble Mongoose, but unless he has another land, probably not gonna play it out in fear of a Mana Leak, which is correct. Alright, we hit in the uh, Treetop Village here. Yeah, that makes sense. Also, that is a beautiful Windswept Heath altar that Ryan has there. Very nice. And John just hitting all the lands, drawing all the cards will do that for you. <laughs> uh, forgetting, I think, to hit his furnace. Then you go free for a round. And Ryan just having to play something out. Yep, gets mana leaked, makes sense. One, are we sacking something specific? Hit the Rift Storm Portal? That makes sense, yeah. Um, just gonna double check, I guess, before he does that, but that does make the most sense to hit. At least right now. Draw a card off of it. It's another land. And is also just looking for Decrees now. He's only got two left in the deck. But he does have a man land that you can use to swing in. A little risky. We do know Ryan has swords. Yep, there we go. But it just gets mana leaked. That makes sense. <laughs> I didn't know he had a second one. But the control deck always has it right. <laughs> Ryan rightfully having to go for it. And... Not quite sure what his life total is at currently. It is definitely less than 23, though. Interesting. Um, maybe Ryan realizing he doesn't actually have a white source to go fetch. And could not cast the swords. Very curious as to what happened there. I mean, this is a very green heavy deck. However, both players have gone through a lot of their fetch lands. Alright, blowing up another land. Suddenly the control deck is becoming the land destruction deck. What is going on? <laughs> And as long as John can keep hitting his land drops, he's going to keep getting in the bees. But it looks like no land drop this time. Another man land, though. That is very relevant. All right, there we go. 
Brian hitting a white source. John very aware. Oh, we're gonna play a mom. That will resolve. And get swords. <laughs> All the answers. That's what the control deck does best. Does he have like two more swords in hand? At least he might have three. He might have drawn all four of his swords. <laughs> That's pretty problematic. All right. Well, we got three man lands. How much are we trying to hit through damage here? How much do we want to leave a dust bowl up? Those are the questions. All right. We're actually going to blow up the white source right away. Makes sense. Animated factory. Swing in. Oh, did we miss a little bit of damage here? Yeah. No, just gonna pass. All right. Opting to hold up some interaction instead. Interesting choice. Civil library coming down, which will get disenchant. Taking a point off of that. And every chance Ryan has to get a little bit of advantage in this game, <laughs> holding on with those two forests. Can't do much with them, unfortunately. It looks like John is fully in control here. Trying to decide exactly how he wants to piece together this attack, but I have to imagine all three main lands getting in potentially. Are we getting greedy? All right. Two factories swinging in for four. Down to 13. Go ahead. I see a lot of white cards in Ryan's hand. I think John is going to keep him off of white no matter what. Swinging in for another four. Try another Sylvan Library. Gets mana leaked. <laughs> Unfortunately, Ryan is not going to find any way out of this. I think things are looking pretty grim. So we get in for four. Do you animate the... Yeah, let's go a Conclave in here too, just to potentially put lethal on the table next turn. And that's a Cataclysm, and <laughs> look at all those answers. John taking it down in a clean two and moves on to the finals. All right, that was a slog, but you know, blue-white control sometimes is like that. Thank you all for watching, especially if you made it this far. If you haven't, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Helps out immensely. If you want to support the channel even more, there is a Patreon link in the video description below. That many goes towards gear upgrades, travel expenses, and just making more pre-modern videos. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.